Shalom, shalom, everybody. It's your brother Yaakov. Here with the weekly, midweek check-in. And we gonna call this one, Everybody Wants to Be a Diamond, But Nobody Wants to Get Cut. <laughs> very, very <clears throat> prevalent topic on my mind. Something I think about a whole lot. Everybody want to be serving of the most high and want to be somebody important to him but nobody want to go through what the scriptures tell us that those who get to be in that position all had to go through make it make sense like my girl monique say <laughs> well, she ain't my girl literally never met her but her sister is from baltimore and i really really respect the way how she Stood up in certain situations for real. So, I mean it in that sense. I ain't doing it in a sense. Like, you know, some people like to name drop and make pretend like they familiar with certain people and they cool with certain people and stuff like that. I ain't mean it like that. But, let me quit stalling and get into the meat and potatoes of what we here to talk about. Matter of fact, let me start off with a little excerpt from an article that I came across when I typed in those words online. This is an article from a page called Evergreen Lessons Home Blog. And I'm reading it under the whole Fair Use Act that was established in 1976. Very, very special year. <laughs> if you know what I mean. If you know, you know. And it's called Everybody Wants to Be a Diamond, but Very Few are willing to get cut. Have you ever seen a successful person who has never faced a single failure in his life? I don't think so. My mom used to say that. She used to ask me like, man, you love to watch that show called Behind the Music. She's like, how would you feel about it if they came on with an episode and it just said so-and-so, like insert your favorite celebrity's name here, was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And just woke up one day and decided they wanted to be a star and it just happened. Now, how interesting would that be? You watch it to see the story. You watch it to see the struggle. How they came up. How they came from where they were at first to getting to be this worldwide star that everybody knows. You know? Like, that's what makes it beautiful. Like, I think it was Common who had an album called The Beautiful Struggle. So, people just want it like that but they don't realize that it really don't happen like that. So let's continue on with the article. Let's read that line one more time. Have you ever seen a successful person who has never faced a single failure in his life? I don't think so. If you want to be successful at some point in your life, you have to take risks. Whether it's a calculated risk or expanding your horizons, it's quite difficult to chase your dreams without any risk. Though the risk is failure prone, but nothing can substitute the experience you are going to get. Swami Vivekananda once said, take risks. If you win, you'll be happy. If you lose, you will be wise. So there is anything like a failure, only experience. And by experience, you become an expert someday. Let me make it simpler for you. Do you like to cook? I just started for real. <laughs> Side note. Imagine what happens if you do not dare to cook. What if you are not willing to take the risk of adding spices and salt in the dish? Will you be able to enjoy delicious dishes? Of course you can order food online and dine out, but you may not be able to enjoy the food of your own making, right? And you may never be able to crack the code behind that aromatic food. Simply, if you have to spice up your life with proper salt and sweetness, then you have to take the risk. This is the solitary path to convert your life from ordinary to extraordinary and mediocre to magnificent. Remember what John A. Shield Shed once quoted, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. The beauty of life lies in continuous progress. Life is beautiful when it is, has a flow. You might have noticed the staleness of stagnant water. The same is true for your life too. I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> and let's get into the real bookity book, the scriptures. And let's start off with Psalm 119 and 71. 
And I want to say that this particular talk is inspired by a talk I had with a very good friend of mine earlier today. And they were talking about how at the time of my life that everybody would think it would be the happiest in the part that people dream about doing and stuff like that. Be hard pressed to find a picture of me smiling. I look very miserable. I look very irritated on most of them. All to the fact, to the point that I remember when I visited a Hebrew congregation, when I was first coming into the truth, a friend of mine invited me to um, come to fellowship and worship with his congregation that he was a part of. So it was a sister there, and I think I told this story on here before, but that's how you know you tell the truth when you tell the same story over and over and tell it the same way every time. It was a sister, as a matter of fact, she's a twin. And she said that her family grew up, like, not being able to listen to any secular music, just the same way I grew up. And so other people there was like, oh, he comes from such and such and so and so. And she was like, I didn't know what that was, so I Googled it. And I saw your picture, and she was like, I almost didn't recognize you. And I said, why? I said, because I go up and down and wait. Because back in the day, it was a joke on, I think it was 93.9 radio station in D.C., and they say, you never know when they come in town. You never know which one you're going to get. You might get the fat one. You might get the skinny one. You might get the in-between one. So I thought that that's why she didn't recognize me. But she said, no, nah, it wasn't that. She giggled because there probably was some truth to it. But she was like, the pictures that I see every time I Google you, you look sad. You look mad. You just look like you're not in a good place. And since you've been here, you haven't stopped smiling. You know, so I didn't even think that was the same person for real. But it definitely was a very sad time in my life. But it was a time in my life that led to me learning and led to my repentance, as we're going to see in these scriptures. So let's get into them. Psalm 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes. New Living Translation. My suffering was good for me. For it taught me to pay attention to your decrees, the Most High's decrees. And what are those? His commandments. This is Ecclesiastes 7 and 3. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. New Living Translation. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. Let's look up the word refining. Refine is a verb, gerund or present participle, refining. Remove impurities or unwanted elements from a substance typically as part of an industrial process. And oddly enough, it's happened to me in the music industry and as part of an industrial process that the Most High was working on me. Another definition says to improve something by making small changes, in particular, make an idea or theory or method more subtle and accurate. So most I was making an idea of me more subtle and more accurate. We getting into it today, y'all. <laughs> Similar words are improve, perfect, and polish up. So most I was polishing me up. This is Sirach Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. My son, if thou come to serve Yah, prepare thyself to prepare thy soul sorry, for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in times of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Good News Translation My child, if you are going to serve Yah, be prepared for the times when he will put you to the when you will be put to the test. It's going to happen. Be sincere and determined. Keep calm when trouble comes. When I 
get a lot that I have a very calm, calm spirit, and I thank the Most High for that. Something that He instilled in me wasn't always this way. Be sincere and determined. Keep calm when trouble comes. Had to read it again. So nice, had to say it twice. Y'all know when I say that, that means I messed up. <laughs> Stay with God. Never abandon Him, and you will be prosperous at the end end of your days i say all the time i'd rather have my whatever's good coming to me i'd rather have it when it lasts forever than to just enjoy as they say in hebrews the pleasures of sin for a moment have all that good stuff and lose it no it ain't gonna have it long this is verse six except whatever happens to you even if you suffer humiliation that's the fear that a lot of people have be patient. Gold is tested by fire, and human character is tested in the furnace of humiliation. That's how the Most High tests us. People think when they say, I gave God my hand, gave the preacher my hand, and gave God my heart. And life been just a bit of roses ever since. It don't happen like that in real life. I'm here to tell you. I remember I had a so-called friend of mine back in the day. I say he's like one of Joe's friends. When my mom was in the hospital in a coma, this man said, that sure is effed up for you to be a gospel singer. He ain't understand, man. He thought that that old way did it. But ever since you get saved, since you get, quote unquote, get saved and give your life to the Most High, to the Lord, that everything just runs smooth after that. That's not true. Just tell you right here. Gold is tested in fire. And human character is tested in the furnace of humiliation. Verse 6. Trust Yah, and he will help you. Walk straight in your way, and put your hope in him. So that's what we got to do when it get rough. Not go back to your old ways, not give up. Trust in him, double down on it. This is Job, who was tested more than a whole bunch of people. I don't know, nobody else that was tested like Job. That's why they say when people have a lot of patience, they say they have the patience of Job, because Job went through it. And this is what he says in verse 23 and 10 of his book. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he have tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Amplified Bible. But he knows the way that I take. And he pays attention to it. The Most High said to humble, he knows up close. So he paying attention. When he has tried me, I will come forth as refined. That's that word again. Gold pure and luminous that glow we talked about last week this is second corinthians in the new testament so that for all the people that only read the new testament or get the new testament read to them at their church and they might can't identify with all this stuff i'm saying from the old testament and apocrypha here goes something right out y'all new testament this is second corinthians chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 now i rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye may receive damage by us in nothing. What they say, people, when they go out and have a good time, that trip don't owe me nothing. Las Vegas don't owe me nothing. Mexico don't owe me nothing. These people that made them sorrow to repentance don't owe them nothing, because they got them right. Verse 10, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Amplified Bible. Yet, I am glad now, not because you were hurt and made sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance, and you turned back to Elohim. For you felt a grief such as Elohim meant for you to feel, so that you may suffer loss so that you might not suffer loss in anything on our account. I owe you nothing. Like I said, for godly sorrow that is in accord with the will of Elohim produces a repentance without regret. <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice cracking like a teenager. <laughs> Maybe I'm with now say the second childhood. Hopefully I'm not the second childhood. Hopefully I am being mature and conducting myself in a mature manner. But anyway, it says, but worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe, produces death. 
And when you look in the related verses, it leads you right back to Ecclesiastes 7 and 3, which is the second verse we read earlier. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. Now let's look at the word that's used for heart in the Greek or the Hebrew. I'm sorry, because we're back in the Old Testament, the original language, the Hebrew. This is word number 3820 in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, Leb. It's a form of Lebab, the heart, also used figuratively very widely for the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. So likewise for the center of everything. So basically, it make you wiser. Stuff that you go through may hurt your heart, make you have a sad face, but in that sad face, you get wiser because you start learning and you start making sense out of the things that happen to you. Like I was reading something today, I identified, I took the Myers-Briggs um, personality test and I, um, the results I got was that I'm an INFJ. So I watch a lot of videos that are um, related to being an INFJ. And then I also took the test and got the results that I'm a Sigma male. So... But it's not a thing that just happens. You're not just automatically an INFJ and you just become a Sigma male. It's things that you master along the way that makes you, takes you from being an INFJ to being a Sigma male. So it's a process. So in the process of all that sorrow, like heart, the wisdom is made better and you basically elevate into a whole different form of person. Like people look at what's that called Dragon Ball Z or whatever and then they elevate to the Super Saiyan mode or whatever. I don't know a lot about it, but that's what I kept hearing people say. Similar to that, I guess. You start off one way like a caterpillar. Then you become the butterfly through going into that deep dark cocoon for however long it takes. And people would think of that as a bad thing. Or like they say, they, they buried me. Not thinking that, not knowing that I was a seed. So when you bury the seed, eventually grows and it becomes a beautiful plant or a beautiful flower or whatever but if it never goes through that period where you get buried that never happens if the butterfly never go into the cocoon caterpillar never go into the cocoon i'm sorry it never becomes that beautiful butterfly so sometimes we gotta go through that time where we being made sorrow for it when we going through it in order to come back out the right way just like that first in job i remember the song when i was young please be patient with me god is not through with me yet for when God is through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Not just automatically, gotta go through it. So I'm encouraging everybody if you're going through it, what they say, keep going. Don't stop. Don't give up. Most high be with each and every one of us. Y'all might as well see my shirt because coat keep coming open anyway. <laughs> but yeah. You know, it's very important for these days and times. Very timely message. Please do this. Most high bless and keep y'all. And me. And prayerfully we get together again real soon. I love y'all. Shalom.